Rheumatoid arthritis is more than just joint pain. It's a chronic autoimmune condition that can affect nearly every aspect of a person's life. While it most commonly targets the small joints of the hands and feet, its reach extends far beyond the joints, potentially involving the lungs, heart, eyes and blood vessels. Despite being one of the most common types of inflammatory arthritis, it remains a complex and often misunderstood disease. In this overview, we'll explore what causes rheumatoid arthritis, how it presents, the organ it can affect, and how modern medicine is transforming the outlook for those living with it. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disease that primarily targets the joints, potentially leading to a progressive joint damage and physical disability. However, it may also affect multiple organ systems. It most commonly affects people aged 30 to 60, but may develop later in life, and is about three times more prevalent in women. The disease arises when the immune system mistakenly attacks the body's own tissues, particularly the synovial membrane that lines the joints. This inappropriate immune response leads to inflammation, pain and swelling. If left untreated, the chronic inflammation can cause destruction of cartilage, bone, tendons and ligaments, resulting in permanent joint deformities. Although the exact cause of rheumatoid arthritis is unknown, it is believed to result from a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Certain genetic variants do not directly cause the disease, but increase the risk of abnormal immune reaction to environmental triggers, such as viral or bacterial infections, potentially initiating the autoimmune process. Recognized risk factors include female sex, advanced age, smoking, obesity, and a family history of disease. The higher prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis in women is the result of complex interactions among hormonal, genetic, and immunological factors. Women are more likely to develop seropositive form of the disease, which is associated with a more aggressive course. It frequently improves during pregnancy, a period characterized by immunological tolerance, and often flares postpartum, suggesting a role for hormonal fluctu fluctuations in disease modulation. In contrast, men more frequently present with seronegative form of disease, which may have different clinical phenotype and may be underdiagnosed. Seronegative or Positive means that they are present or absent specific antibodies associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Understanding these sex-specific mechanisms is essential for improving diagnostic and therapeutic approaches tailored to individual patients. Rheumatoid arthritis typically presents with inflammation in multiple joints simultaneously, especially the small joints of the hands and feet, as well as the wrists, knees and ankles. Joint involvement is usually symmetric, meaning the same joints on the both sides of the body are affected. Affected individuals often experience morning stiffness that lasts longer than 30 minutes and improves with movement, a hallmark feature of inflammatory arthritis. Persistent inflammation may eventually lead to joint destruction and characteristic deformities such as ulnar deviation and swan neck or boutonniere deformities. In chronic disease, not only are joints affected, but also adjacent structures, like tendons, 
This is particularly evident in the hands and wrists, where tendon damage can severely impair function. The small joints of the feet are also commonly involved, and damage here may result in flat feet or altered gait. Cervical spine involvement, especially at the atlantoaxial joint, can lead to neck pain and, in rare cases, neurological complications. In addition to joint symptoms, patients may experience systemic manifestations such as fatigue, low-grade fever, and unintentional weight loss. Extraarticular involvement is a well-recognized aspect of rheumatoid arthritis. The lungs may be affected by pleural effusion, accumulation of fluid around the lungs, or intersti interstitial lung disease, fibrosis of lung tissue making it harder for it to expand, leading to a chest discomfort, dry cough, and shortness of breath. Inflammation of the pericardium, the heart lining, also called pericarditis, may also occur but is usually asymptomatic, meaning it causes no problems. Blood abnormalities are frequent, anemia of chronic disease is common, and thrombocytosis, that is elevated platelet count, may reflect active inflammation. Rarely, Patients develop Felty syndrome, characterized by rheumatoid arthritis, planomegaly, enlarged spleen, and neutropenia, low white blood cell count. Another rare but serious complication is rheumatoid vasculitis, which involves inflammation of small to medium-sized blood vessels, and may cause skin changes such as petechy, purpura, ulcers, or gangrene. Chronic inflammation, glucocorticoid use, and reduced mobility contribute to the development of osteoporosis in persons affected by rheumatoid arthritis, increasing the risk of fractures, particularly in the hip and spine. Diagnosis is made based on clinical assessment, laboratory findings, and imaging. A rheumatologist will evaluate the pattern of joint involvement, symptoms duration, and associated features. Important laboratory tests include markers of inflammation, including erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein, as well as autoantibodies such as rheumatoid factor and anticyclic citrullinated peptide, or anti-CCP antibodies. Anti-CCP antibodies, in particular, are highly specific for rheumatoid arthritis and can help predict disease severity. Imaging techniques, such as joint ultrasound, X-ray, and magnetic resonance imaging, can detect synovitis, joint effusion, bone erosions, and early signs of cartilage loss, helping to confirm the diagnosis and monitor disease progression. Treatment involves a multi-pronged approach aimed at controlling inflammation, preventing joint damage, and improving quality of life. Medications used fall into three main categories. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, disease-modifying antiromatic drugs, and biologic agents. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids reduce inflammation and provide symptom relief, but do not alter the course of the disease. Today, they are used as adjunctive therapy with drugs that do affect the course of the disease. Conventional disease-modifying Antiromatic drugs such as methotrexate, sulfasalazine, and leflunomine suppress the immune system and can slow or halt disease progression. Their effects typically begin after 6 to 12 weeks of treatment. Biologic disease modifying antiromatic drugs, including 
tumor necrosis factor inhibitors and interleukin-6 receptor antagonists are reserved for individuals with inadequate response to conventional therapy. These targeted therapies have significantly improved outcomes but require thorough pretreatment screening for infections and malignancies due to their immunosuppressive effects. Think of them as smart weapons. They do not shut down the whole army, they take out the problematic generals. This helps control disease more effectively with fewer side effects. Yanus kinase inhibitors, a newer class of oral targeted therapies, are also available and effective in certain patient populations. In cases of advanced joint damage or functional impairment, surgical intervention may be necessary. Surgical options include joint replacement, synovectomy, that is removal of the inflamed synovial lining, and tendon repair. Rheumatoid arthritis is a heterogeneous disease with an unpredictable course. While a small subset of patients may experience spontaneous remission, within the first six months, most develop a chronic, fluctuating disease with alternating periods of exacerbation and remission. Thanks to a modern therapeutic uh, strategies and early diagnoses, long-term outcomes have dramatically improved. Severe disability due to joint deformities have become uncommon, especially when treatment is initiated promptly. Early referral to a rheumatologist and regular monitoring are essential. With individualized therapy, most patients can achieve low disease activity or remission, maintain joint function, and have a good quality of life. With timely diagnosis, modern therapy, and regular follow-up, life with rheumatoid arthritis can be not just manageable, but full of hope. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more educational content. Have a great day.